Hello, everyone. Jamie Maloney here, host of the All Do That Business Show 2.0, where business becomes show business. Talking to many different business owners, entrepreneurs, and community leaders each morning on the program and then on demand on iTunes and our YouTube channel. Simply find us at thatyoutubechannel.com. We've made it easy to find via that URL. Just go to thatyoutubechannel.com. Also, we have a Facebook group. We are doing it via Facebook Live now. Just uh, search out That Business Network inside Facebook, and you can join that and see the live streams uh, each and every morning at 7 a.m. inside That Business Network, in addition to Tampa Bay Radio. Com for the new episodes. So my guest on today's program is Stacy Tushel. She is an entrepreneur and business performance strategist, and we're happy to have Stacy with us today. So Stacy, how are you doing today? Hi, Jamie. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're quite welcome. So talk to us about your first business, because this is an interesting story that you started in your parents' backyard at the age of 18 and grew it into a seven-figure business. Take us through this first business. Yeah. So, and I still have that business. That's usually a question that everybody always asks me. So Right out of high school, I decided that um, I was I was a big dancer. I really I enjoyed being on the dance team. So I thought, you know, while I'm going to school, I'm going to start a middle school dance team completely for free, just for fun, really for me to be able to continue doing what I love to do. So I, you know, put out a flyer. I had 17 kids that first year come and do this dance team. Within three years, I had 100 kids coming to my parents' backyard. All right. You know, we had several teams at the time, you know, all ages from kindergarten till up until eighth grade. And then, you know, as I was finishing school, starting to really go, what am I doing with this degree? You know, what do I want to do? I then decided, okay, maybe I could turn this into a real business. You know, maybe I could start charging, create a dance studio. So actually when I was 21, I incorporated and we found a rental space in our local area and moved all the dancers over there and, you know, went into business. And today that business is um, much different than it, than it used to be, but we have two locations. We own both of the commercial buildings that they're in. One's 9,000 square feet. Another one is um, 7,200 square feet. Um, we gross over a million dollars a year. We have about 40 employees that, you know, whether they teach or they're the administrative side. So it's a pretty big organization. I mean, we started from scratch and it's unbelievable to see what it looks like 15 years later. Now for starting at such a young age and growing it into such an impressive business with, you know, buildings that you actually own and with the staff, you know, growth and expansion is, is such a difficult uh, area of business or area of the life cycle of a business for many entrepreneurs. How did you grow your business? How did you know when to hire that first employee? Talk to us about the growth. Yeah. So, well, you know, the growth, even in, in the first three years from 17 to hundred, that wasn't me marketing. That was just me giving value and people enjoying it. Right. So the kids were telling their friends, the moms were telling their friends about it and it organically grew. But then when I decided, okay, this is a real business, let's actually put some money here. Let's start to market, you know, then obviously things blew up and I realized I can't do this by myself. If, if I want to basically have a, a life where I can not have to be there from, you know, morning till night, I need to have somebody help me. So I ended up that first year we incorporated, I, I hired two very part-time additional teachers that could be in the classroom so I could really start to focus on the business itself. And what were some of those early lessons that you learned about entrepreneurship that prepared you now for your life as a serial entrepreneur and also author of your uh, number one international bestseller is your business worth saving that we'll discuss here in just a moment. Yeah, I think one of the biggest lessons learned and, you know, in school, I was a pretty good student, but I wasn't somebody who loved to read and loved to learn and all of that. And, you know, it wasn't until I read my first business book and started going to live events and listening to podcasts that I really decided, wow, I love learning about business. You know, it was, it was something that really interested me. And I, I think it's because, you know, you, you take it in and you implement it and you're seeing this immediate result. So of course you start to get addicted to it. So I think the biggest thing was you don't know what you don't know, and you need to start surrounding yourself with incredible people doing those things. You need to be listening to people who have done what you want to do, listen to podcasts like this. So I think it was a big thing for me to realize, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I need some major help and I need to start getting in that circle where people are really excelling and I can start to watch and model what they're doing. Now talk to me about your businesses as it exists today. You have your uh, studio still. Uh, what else yeah. are you involved in today? Yeah, so I have, that's my first business. 
a few, I would say maybe five, six, actually my, my first rental property was really my first house. I bought a duplex and then I started to realize the benefits of real estate. So after the duplex, I ended up getting a vacation rental property. We built our first building. The next one, we, we bought that commercial building. We added a tenant. So I, I've got a little into real estate. I definitely am not this huge real estate expert, but it's something we do. And then um, two years ago, I came into the online space. It was kind of, it was kind of funny because just like I organically started to teach for fun for free in the dance space, online, all of a sudden people were saying, hey, could you teach me how you're doing this? How are you running this business, but not actually working in the business? And how are you managing this team? So I started teaching other entrepreneurs um, for free just because I love this so much. <laughs> so I would go to Starbucks with them or they'd take me to lunch or we'd Skype online. So Two years ago, I thought, hmm, maybe I could do this as a business too. So I came out in the online space, wrote a book, Is Your Business Worth Saving? I now have a podcast. She's building her empire. So I'm doing that. This is a big, big part of what I'm doing now. I mean, I'm, I have my own podcast, but I'm on other people's podcasts all the time too. So this has been a, a huge passion of mine. I'm so excited to be able to be here and share this with everyone. That's a, that's a great uh, growth strategy uh, too. Yeah. You know, more and more prevalent today is, is doing a podcast, which I do, and then going on other people's podcasts. Mm -hmm. Talk to, uh, you know, the business owners out there about how that circuit works. How do you get on other people's podcasts? What are some resources they could know about? Yeah. So I think podcasting is people assume, oh, let's go get a podcast and make all this money. For me, what I've realized about podcasting is the connections that you will make will surpass every other result that you get because it's just such a great way to get in front of somebody, connect with them, meet with them, get to really form this relationship. And a lot of times it is, you know, reciprocated. You come on somebody's show, they ask you to go on theirs. You just start to build this relationship where you can now go back and reach out. So um, I have done... Um, uh, different businesses where they'll, you can hire them to actually reach out and kind of pitch you to certain shows. Um, we have done this in house as well, where my team does it just depends on if you have a team that's able to do that, or you'd rather just outsource it and let somebody else do that for you. But you can absolutely reach out to people and just pitch them and say, Hey, listen, I think I have something really valuable for your audience. Here's what I could talk about. Here's what I could share. Um, you'd be surprised how many people say, yeah, absolutely. Let's have you on. So yeah. you've got to just give that great value and, and they'll want you to be there. Yeah. And it's an excellent way to grow your, uh, uh, you know, a stock of uh, media appearances of uh, videos and audios. Uh, take, uh, most of the time the people put them up on YouTube or on a, an yeah. audio site of some sort, put them on your website and start to make yourself look like an expert because that's mm -hmm. uh, going to get you to uh, stand out in your business. And you're right. There's plenty of shows out there. Don't get hung up with the number of listeners or viewers they may or may not have use it as a resource to begin building products for your business yeah. and it's a tremendous uh you know growing market out there so many different podcasts out there we're in a very vibrant community here in uh, tampa bay we have a, a local podcasters association that meets once a month 40 or 50 people regularly i meet uh, my good friend chris just commissioned a, a film called the messengers uh which mm -hmm. is a documentary on uh, podcasting people can go to the messengers doc.com and see that trailer uh, i see that you were recently on uh, entrepreneur on fire with uh, john lee dumas yeah he actually yeah. Uh, he's in the uh, movie i got to spend some time with him down oh, in puerto rico cool. and yeah uh, he's featured in the uh, film john lee dumas host of entrepreneur on fire one of the top uh, business podcasts uh, in the uh, country one of the top podcast mm -hmm. period so she's been yeah. featured on eo fire uh, as well standing for entrepreneur on fire now you've written your book uh, is your business worth saving first off who is this book written for yeah so what I realized was I was going to all these conferences and, you know, really becoming good friends with a lot of people and have, hearing conversations of people saying, is this really worth it? Can I really make money? Do I really keep going? Should I just get a job? Like this just, it doesn't make sense, you know? So I think that was a big thing for me to start to hear. And then when I started to coach other women, it happens a lot. You know, you're, you're hearing questions. So for me, it was somebody who might be thinking about it, doubting what they could be doing, but in their heart know that the answer is yes. And they just need the strategies. They just need the tips and the tools and techniques to really move forward. So this book really dives into that. There's actually a quiz in there that helps you figure out where are your weaknesses? How do we really figure out what can we outsource or what can we do to help you, you know, strengthen all areas of your business? So in the first, I think, 48 hours, 13,000 people ended up, you know, getting that book, which is just to show you how many people that title really resonates with. 
Now, the book is a number one international bestseller. Did you do any specific marketing for the book? Was it word of mouth? How did it get to such stature? Yeah, so we definitely, I, I'm a big launcher. I really, truly, I really, truly believe in, you know, making everything this big celebration, big promotion. So we prepped for that book launch, I bet 90 days out. Really, we're strategic, trying to, you know, capture emails and, give them more value. We have things where even if you bought the book, there was a bonus mini courses that you could grab and all of that. So yes, we put a lot into that and made it again, be something where people, it was a no brainer, right? Obviously they're going to go grab it when the book had this amazing mini course attached to it or other options like that, that we had included. Currently talking to again, Stacey Tushel. She is a uh, coach and uh, consultant and also started her first business at the age of 18, a, a little uh, dance uh, studio there. And today is a uh, multi, uh, I should say seven figure earner with coaching and consulting. And we'll talk a little bit more about her businesses. When we come back from a break, we'll focus a little bit about starting an online business on a budget and also how to tame your to-do list and focus on your biggest priority. Some of the takeaways from uh, her teaching and her consulting. And you can also learn more about her at her website, she'sbuildingherempire.com. She'sbuildingherempire.com, which many of us want to do to build an empire. So again, you're listening to the All New That Business Show 2.0. I am your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tile, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Hi, Jackie Skelton from JR World Travel here. If you travel, you need a licensed professional travel consultant, not a computer. Your licensed professional consultant can get you more for your time and your money. Value for your money and experience, not marketing salesmanship. When you're sick, you call the doctor. When you need legal advice, you call an attorney. So the next time you want to go on any type of travel, call your licensed professional travel consultant who actually represents you. We specialise in group travel, family reunions, weddings to escorting large groups or making special arrangements for the disabled. Please call 844 249 0190. We are a full service travel consultancy offering worldwide concierge service. Air, land, sea, rivers, resorts, locally, nationally and internationally. Remember that number, 844 249 0190. Welcome back to the all-new That Business Show 
2.0, where business becomes show business. Talking with Stacey Tushel. She is, again, the author of the international bestseller, Is Your Business Worth Saving? So let's go into some lessons uh, that she can help you as an entrepreneur with your own business, starting with the, an online business on a budget. There's so many entrepreneurs today that, you know, service businesses are becoming, you know, the way of the future right now. And you know, productization, less and less. There's so many people are focusing on how to start an online business and obviously on a budget. What can you share with us in this uh, area? Yeah, so I think what's really powerful right now is how inexpensive you can do this online space, right? I mean, all of these social platforms that are free, jumping on Facebook Lives, there is a very little bit of money that needs to be spent to actually see your business start to profit. So I'm a big believer in, you know, kind of working with what you have. And as that money starts coming in, just reinvesting it into some bigger and better products. But, you know, to get started, it's, it's as simple as you have to jump on Facebook Live. I can tell you that for sure. I always have people say to me, you know, they connect so much faster than they do through email or through my podcast. Or So I love, love, love Facebook Live. And, and really all you need to be good at Facebook Live is a simple light or a, a mount, right? And you, I always say to people too, if you're going, I don't even have the money for that. You can, it's as simple as facing a window and having the sunlight hit you, right? Mm -hmm. um, you don't even need to invest in something like that. Propping your phone up and, you know, having it sit somewhere just so it's stable. So my number one tool is Facebook Live. I jump on Facebook Live probably three times a week. And it honestly is so much more powerful than anything else we're doing. And then on top of it, we can stick some Facebook ads to it for very little money. So I think... Um, one of our recent stats, I was on a Facebook Live and it had reached about 300 people organically in just a short period of time. But as soon as we put about $30 to that specific ad, we were up to 3,000 within that day. So just to show you how quickly you can, you know, spend a little bit of money and en engage that audience and grow that. So I would say do as much as you can with really giving that value, being live, being real, being authentic. Um, but then obviously we're trying to transition them to our email list. And what's great about that is there's uh, other email providers like MailChimp that's free or ConvertKit that's only $29 a month. You know, coming from the brick and mortar space, I hope people really understand and appreciate how incredibly low cost these tools are because Trust me, my mortgage and my heating bill and, you know, my internet and all this stuff that I have to pay for in a brick and mortar actual facility, you just get, you don't have to do that on the online space. So use that to your advantage and really start to earn the trust of the people around you that know, like, and trust factor. Now, do you just do Facebook Live on your personal feed? Uh, we Facebook Live the show each morning inside a group that we set up for just the uh, program and uh, keeping it out of my personal feed. But, you know, this is a, a produced product and stuff, and so we yeah. keep that inside that network. Do you do Facebook Live outside of your personal feed? So we do Facebook Lives on our fan page, and then we share them into the group that we are, we have like a She's Building Her Empire group. There's about 1,600 female entrepreneurs in there. Okay. So when I go live on my fan page, I share it in the group because I know the group is going to be engaging with it, and that engagement will help my fan page. So if you do it just to your group, you're kind of losing the reach of outsiders. So we love to do it on the fan page so that we can reach people that have never seen us before, never heard us. And then not only that, we can stick some money to it and, do, and run a Facebook ad to it for video. I, I, I've been thinking about changing it from uh, the, the Facebook group yeah. into the fan page because I have the, my personal, which I, I don't want to do too much businessy stuff on there. I don't either. Yeah, yeah you know, there's, a, there's like, like an unwritten rule that you're not supposed to, you know, I mean, I do it, yeah. but I don't want to do it too much. And But yeah, right now I set up a group and I'm thinking I maybe need to do that on my fan page and then share back yeah. into the group. And so yeah, yeah so I have my assistant watch me go live. And as soon as I'm live, she goes on Facebook and shares it in the group. So I'm not distracted having to do that. So it actually works out pretty nice. Good information right there. Now, yeah. what's another tip about starting a business on a budget? Uh, I see that you went into the, you know, coaching and consulting business. A lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. For people that are considering going down that path, what tips would you give to them? Do they need to have yeah. some type of big online program or is it just enough to be there to talk to people? Yeah, that is such a good question because I think we, we're looking at these big gurus who are, you know, making millions on a do-it-yourself course and, you know, they're jumping on a webinar. It's a recorded webinar. They're not even there live making, ton, you know, tens of thousands of dollars every day. But when you're just starting out, nobody really tells you, you, you need to start with the one-on-one, -on -one, right? Just trading your time for service or time for money in the beginning because 
it's going to be a lot harder to reach the masses and sell, you know, 10 programs every time you jump on a webinar or launch a big course and know if people actually want that course, right? So there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one services going on that you'll sell your time for, but I, I use it as research mode, right? So when I'm jumping on one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not just going, oh, I can't believe I'm, you know, I'm trading this money for my time when I could be launching to everybody and selling to the masses. There's going to be a time when you can all of a sudden switch to a group program, right? And then after the group program, your time gets more and more limited. And then you might switch to having it be recorded and things like that. So for me, I did one-on-one -on -one for quite a while. And then when I was deciding, okay, I can, I have a big enough following, I can switch to groups. I kept the one-on-ones, but I increased the prices, right? So it just automatically gave me fewer clients, but more money was coming in. And then I focused my time on the group and being able to serve a mass amount of people versus, you know, just one-to-one. -one. Now, when you began your consulting, did you, you did, you just basically traded your time for the money then you didn't really yeah. have the, you know, the 10 step program, the website to, to behind you. It was just like, let's talk. And so that's how yeah. you began. Yeah. And you know, and here's the thing too, people are going, but what do I charge for my price point? So for me, when I first started out, I charged $200 for an hour. I kind of just threw that number out there. I knew that it had to be somewhat higher because, you know, I was already running a very successful business and I didn't have that much time to be, you know, taking private calls. So, you know, since then I'd have a few clients book and then I'd go, okay, time to raise the rates. I have more clients book. All right. Time to raise the rates. So mm -hmm. that number just really keeps going up. And that's what you're going to see happening for yourself too. And you said the majority of the business came through Facebook lives. Yeah. Most of my um, Facebook lives convert really well. We always have an opt-in where we say, Hey, if you liked this and you want to grab the free download, go to this website. Um, so we'll grab emails and then we'll convert them through emails or directly on the Facebook lives. I've had people privately message me after the live is over and say, Hey, how do I sign up? Or, you know, what do you have to offer? What do I do? So um, our most recent launch was done through a five day challenge, which, which happened on Facebook live. Well, wow, great information here. Yeah. So you obviously, you know, have a lot of to do's coming at you. So how do you focus on your biggest priorities and keep those smaller to do's off your plate? Yeah. So I am a big believer in building a team, delegating. And I know that probably sounds, you know, very scary for some people listening, but here's what I can tell you. So my, my original team of 40 that I have in my brick and mortar, you know, it started as just me and I grew it one person at a time. And I think that's just where you need to start. You know, you need to figure out what you have to get off your plate right now. And then what position does that look like? What type of person do we need to hire? What's the budget for that person? And, you know, what's the best use of my time right now? It's probably not doing some jobs that are $10 an hour. Um, some maybe even cheaper, depending on where you hire and who you hire. Good information. Now, what are some of the must-have tech tools you need to run your business? So I would, first and foremost, you need to have an email provider and not just using your Gmail account or anything like that, but you do need a real system where you start collecting these leads and then you can start to tag them and say, they liked the challenge. So, you know, that's who these people are. And these people loved hearing about online techniques. So we're going to put them there, starting to kind of keep this library of who you've got in your list. So you can then go and reach out to them. So that's definitely number one. Um, we talked about video, getting, you know, a mount, a light, things like that. And then it would really be, I think, more of a landing service. Or if you, if you don't have a website that you're using, using something like lead pages or mm -hmm. Insta page, where you can create that landing page to capture those email addresses and send them somewhere. I see that more and more. People are investing less than uh, heavily yeah. contented sites. And they're yes. just simple lead capture pages with a, you know, a couple of lines on them. And so people go to mm -hmm. leadpages.net and uh, set up a, a simple uh, lead page. And you'd be surprised how many uh, people are doing this uh, more and more. Mail yeah. service provider, which one do you like? Who's your service? Um, we use Entreport, and I probably will be to Infusionsoft by the end of the year, I'm, I'm going to guess. Infusionsoft is kind of for that upper level entrepreneur. Of course, there's various levels of, uh, of uh, functionality with that program, but uh, yeah. you're the best and brightest to uh, use the full capacity. That's a very good program uh, to mention, but it takes some time to learn that thing, though, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> yes. And we actually have somebody on our team that knows how to use it. Probably that would be best, the only yeah. reason we would even consider <laughs> switching. That's yes. a good, good tip. Hire somebody that yes. knows how to use Infusionsoft uh, software. <laughs> versus trying to uh, teach it yourself. Uh, real quick, uh, your book, uh, Is Your Business Worth Saving? Availability, where can people find it? Um, it's on Amazon, or you can go right to my website. But yeah, either way is, is good. Um, 
and definitely check it out because there's some really great bonuses and quizzes that come with it included to really help assess your situation and your business. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Stacey uh, Tushel, yeah. for being with us uh, today on the uh, program. And again, you can learn more at She's Building her empire.com. So thank you, Stacy. Great. Thank you so much, Jamie. I appreciate being here. Absolutely. And you can learn more about this program. We're at tampabayradio.com each and every weekday morning at 7 a.m. with new episodes. And if you'd like to come on to the program, we'd love to hear from you too. Simply visit tbsinterview.com. And we're also on Facebook. Like she uh, mentioned there, you got to be on Facebook uh, to uh, find uh, people uh, these days. And so we're streaming right now inside that business network. Uh, but we also may move that over to our fan page, which is uh, that business show. You find that facebook.com forward slash that business show. So head over there and uh, give us a like. And if we can reciprocate, send us a message and we're happy to uh, do that as well. All shows available on demand on iTunes, also on YouTube. Simply go to that YouTube channel.com. And again, you've been listening to the all new that business show 2.0. I'm your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. <laughs>